we are going to simulate some games. Games are usually based on randomness. So we use randomness in order to simulate these games. This is the first one, a simple one. We have a board of 5x5 five five, and we are going to put randomly in there an X or nothing. We do that with a very simple formula equals if the rand function which returns a random number between 0 and 1 is greater than 0.5 that means in 50% of the cases we put an x in there otherwise nothing or a 0 if you prefer that and you copy that formula 5 down and 5 to the right and then each time we run f9 it will redo that and at the moment we find five axes in the same row we would like to highlight that situation so we put in the whole range a conditional format the format for that conditional format the, the formula for that conditional format is count if in the range a1 through e1 lock the a and the e that means that entire row but one is not locked, so it will automatically do it for row 2, 3, 4, 5. If you count 5 axes in there, then we want to highlight that range. Then we did one extra thing. How often did we find 2 axes, 4 up to 24? It's very unlikely that only 2 axes will be found, or 24 most of them will be 12 somewhere in the middle so we made here like a frequency distribution so you type 2 4 6 etc but the formula here is if the count if function finds in a1 through e5 that is the entire board a number of axes that is equal to a 8 in this case that is 2 and then 4 and then 6 then add 1 to the cell we are in, otherwise keep what is in there. Um, if you are familiar with Excel, you realize that we have an internal reference there, a circular reference to the cell itself that we are in. It's not accepted in Excel unless you change that. How can you change that? We are going to accept circular references, file, options, go to formulas, and make sure that you enable iterative calculation with a maximum iteration of 1. Let me click OK. So now we will see each time we press F9 that sometimes those numbers go up, sometimes they don't. If you want to start from scratch again after a while, then you highlight all these formulas that do a count if function. You click in the formula bar and you reactivate it again with Control Enter. And now we start at 0. So now we will go with 0, 0, 0 until we find specific numbers. Of course we don't find 13 and 15. I skip those. If you want those included, go ahead. The next game we are going to use works with characters. In this case we have 10 by 10 rows and columns. So we have 100 characters and they are chosen randomly. We do that with a very simple formula. It's the character function that finds a character based on a certain number. If you find a random number between 65 and 90, if it's 65 you will find a capital A, other, otherwise you will find B, C, up to 90, capital Z. Uh, if you don't have ran between on your machine, it's because you have an older Excel version. I will show you next how to solve that problem. But if you do have ran between, just copy that formula down and to the right. Then we are going to make sure that you find certain characters. Let's say the two characters N, O, either horizontally or vertically or whatever you want. So you type in here what you want to see. I put a validation in here and the validation says at the same time you have to have an exact uh, M2, the upper version of it, and the length should be 2. You do that in data, data validation, 
and you put a rule in there that says a custom form and here is that formula that I just showed you so in other words if, if I type there a lowercase no it will not do that it will not accept that if you type in there not it will not accept that we will only accept two so I can also accept o n on and we press F9 and there we find on in this case horizontally why only horizontally in this case it depends on the formula you use for conditional formatting this is the formula to use for conditional formatting if you only want the horizontal one then you say B1 ampersand C1 the combination of two cells together should be the same as M2 locked absolute but if you want also the vertical one then you need an OR function B1 and C1 equals M2 or B1 and B2 downwards M2 and you can do more ORs of course if you don't have RAND between then you need another function of course I did not change any setting except the functions inside those 100 cells we use the character function again but because we can't use RAND between we use the integer function that rounds down to a full integer 90 that was the Z minus 65 that was the capital A plus 1 times the RAND function plus 65 and you will still get all characters of the alphabet in the next one we are going to count all those characters and to see how often they occur and of course we should get more or less equal numbers so how did we get A through Z that is very clear now you use the character function I used the row function besides of the cell A65 what is the row number of cell A65 65 of course but when I copy that formula down it will go into A66 A67 etc so I get a nice alphabet without much work and now we are going to put in here a count if function again if the count if function in the entire board of characters B1 through K10 happens to have an A in it then we and that count is greater than 1 then we add to P1 that count equal either 1 or 2 or 3 or 4 otherwise P1 remember that is a circular reference again so you have to make sure that you have iterative calculation turned on and this one will perfectly recalculate each time that you run the things and they will go up if you want to start at zero again you know the trick now you highlight all those cells click in the formula bar and re-implement them with control enter okay. and now we start at zero and they will go up but almost equivalently because we gave them all the same chance to occur which is very unusual in most languages because certain characters are more frequent so we are going to weight them in the next one in this case I weighted them in column S and T you know now what is in S that is the character function with the row function and then column T is where you weigh them so these are weighted characters so I did certain characters very frequent and others very low like the Z I only gave a value of 1 and Y etc the E is a more frequent one in English and in most other languages but this is just fantasy so now I have to make sure that the calculation here is based on these weighted values so how do we weight them properly we are going to give the first a value of zero and the second one we are going to say sum the T1 value through 
T1, but notice that the first T1 is relative, that means it will change into T3, T4, T5, but the other T1 is absolute, it always starts with the A function. So when you do that, and you copy that formula down, you will get a maximum of 70 here, because I happen to have these values. So now I can say if it's up to 4, and not 4, then we should have an A up to 7, etc. A B, etc. So where is the trick now? The trick is in this formula. We are going to look up. I used rand between in this case. If you don't have don't have that, you have to use the rand function with the trick I showed you before. Between 0 and 70. Why 0 and 70? Because 70 is the max here. So we are going to look in this range. So V look up rand between a number between 0 and 70. And look up in R1 through S26. R1 for S26. And find the answer in column 2 of that range. Okay. So we look up that number. And we will find these characters. So I'm going to redo all of it. And you will see that the A occurs much more often than the B. And the Z and the Y are the, probably the lowest ones. Because we gave them a very low value of occurrence. So we will get perfect thing. Again, the same trick as before. We can start at zero. By selecting that range and re-implement the formula. And you will see that the i happens to be 10 times already, but that is randomness. That is very unlikely, but it may happen. Results may vary. That is the rule of randomness. I think I gave you enough ideas to create your own games with randomness in Excel.